Member Jose Weezer, I'm joined by Councilwoman Wendy Gruel, and I understand that Councilmember Dennis Zine will join us soon, at least that's what his staff member told me. Um, and uh, this is a meeting of the Audits and Government Efficiency Committee. Uh, we are holding a short meeting today, should go by fairly quick. Uh, we are holding this meeting, uh, it was originally scheduled for next week, but since we ha will not be in session due to the inauguration, historic inauguration um, uh, we will we had it today so if it's okay with uh, my colleague Wendy Gruel we will continue items two through five uh, so that those files do not expire and the item that we will take up today is item number one which is an audit of the Department of Public Works special revenue fund if that's okay And um, as we all know, in this time of budget shortages, uh, it's critical that we look at every, uh, under every stone to see what is available for potential revenue. Uh, the audit that we will discuss today uh, is an example of that idea. And what we will do is first listen to the controller and her report or her staff. And secondly, we'll ask to hear from Public Works uh, to just respond to the audit. Uh, and we'll go from there. So if the clerk can read item number one, please. Item number one is a city controller report relative to the special revenue fund audit at the Department of Public Works and communication relative to the Department of Public Works response to the audit. Thank you. The controller's office here. Thank you. Mike Lee from Controller's Audit, uh, Chief Auditor from the Controller's Office. Uh, we issued the audit report on uh, August 27, 2008. Uh, the <coughs> Department of Public Works uh, manages over 250 uh, special revenue funds with a total balance of $1.2 billion. So based on uh, risk assessment, uh, you know, in our uh, sample, we eliminate MICLA funds and uh, uh, bond funds. So uh, there were 57 special revenue funds uh, with a balance of $334 million under the charge of uh, public works. And uh, we uh, tested and uh, look at the document more in detail for 29 of the 57 funds. Okay, our objectives were, of the audit were, evaluate, to evaluate the adequacy of internal control over the selected funds, and uh, to determine if transactions are made in accordance with the uh, specific purpose uh, for which uh, the special funds were set by the ordinance. Then uh, determine whether the condition reasonably warranted the creation of the fund. And uh, our, uh, we found that, uh, you know, even though we did not note any inappropriate expenditure uh, in the fund we looked at it, uh, we found the uh, department did not actively monitor the fund's status, uh, meaning, uh, you know, many of them were inactive. So 19 of 29, we looked at it, had uh, no deposit or expenditures for at least uh, three years. So it's been, we call it, uh, very inactive. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, we also identified uh, almost $1 million uh, sitting idle, uh, which can be transferred to the general fund. Uh, in uh, 16 uh, inactive special fund, and uh, I believe uh, public public works already transferred 436,000 of them to the general fund, and uh, uh, then uh, another the rest of them 522,000 uh, transfer of the 522,000 is currently uh, pending. Then. Uh, we also found that uh, public work did not charge uh, 5.4 million in city uh, uh, labor cost against the uh, Griffiths Observatory Trust Fund and uh, did not report the actual project cost to the oversight committee. 
uh, during the construction uh, uh, period. So department also had to return $193,000 in interest to, to the state because uh, department did not submit the closeout report uh, for the project within the required 60 days of the project completion. So department, uh, we recommend that department report the actual project cost in the monthly progress report from now on, you know, which was already complete, but any construction project, we uh, recommend them to uh, report the actual project cost in the monthly progress report. And uh, uh, transfer, you know, unexpended uh, uh, available money of 3.3 .3 million from the Grafis Observatory Trust Fund to the General Fund. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we found that uh, uh, the department did not review outstanding encumbrance. And uh, you know, city is very, uh, uh, now depart uh, has to be diligent to transfer unspent monies to the General Fund. And uh, they, about $424,000 were finally reverted to the general fund in April 2008, which uh, if they were diligent, I think they could have reverted uh, you know, one year earlier. Then uh, we found some uh, minor uh, reporting uh, requirement uh, they overlooked, and uh, uh, they could have done a better uh, budget estimate on uh, one of their special fund. Thank you. Right, thank you. If you could remain up here while we ask the Department of Public Works to come up and uh, present your response to the controller's findings. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, let's see. Good afternoon. Uh, Craig Bloomquist, uh, Director, Public Works Office of Accounting. And um, Basically, we, we, we carefully uh, reviewed the findings of the controller's office and to kind of summarize our, in our perspective what has occurred here. Uh, the uh, controller identified $3.8 million in funds that could be transferred to the general fund, as they indicated in their report. And of that $3.8 million, $3.3 million was for the Griffiths Observatory project. Uh, so talking about the Griffiths Observatory project for a second, it wasn't until August of 2008 that the final non-labor payments for this project were completed, which included a payment of $2.85 million to the general contractor in settlement of a claim which had amounted to, to $12 million but due to the negotiation skills of our Bureau of Engineering, they were able to reduce that claim from 12 million down to 2.85 million. Uh, so with project funds were being held for this potential settlement with this uh, claim from the contractor. Once the payment was made to the contractor in this settlement, that left actually 4.16 million in remaining project funds for the Griffiths Observatory, which is more than the 3.3 million that the controller indicated in its audit report. And uh, the CAO wrote an addendum to the first financial status report in September 2008, which directed how these funds of 4.16 million were to be closed out. And they directed that 0.9 million would be going to the general fund as revenue, that was interest income that was earned for CIEP funds that provided fund funding for the project. And they said that 0.3 million should reimburse the general fund for prior year's staff costs. 0.4 million should be retained in the MICLA funds, which was a source of funding for the project. And 2.5 million should be returned to the CIEP for future projects. And so the uh, Office of Accounting and Public Works has carried out all of the CAO's recommendations, which was uh, part of the first financial status report, with the one exception of transferring the 0.3 million to the general fund for prior year staffing costs. Prior
primarily because we're still trying to get encumbrances disencumbered from the SMS system, and because of system upgrades in SMS, uh, we've had problems getting those amounts disencumbered. But once we do, we will have completed those recommendations with respect to the Griffiths Observatory. So, uh, as, as I mentioned, the controllers audit identified 3.8 million that uh, was available uh, for transfer to the general fund. And that left uh, $436,000 that could be transferred to the general fund when you, when you consider the 3.8 less the 3.3 that they said was for the Griffiths Observatory Program. That left the 436000 that could be transferred to the general fund from 10 assessment funds primarily. Uh, we have since transferred that amount to the general fund and uh, basically the reason why we had not transferred those funds previously is, is a little complex, but it essentially has to do with the assessment function in the Department of Public Works has been transferred from one organization to another over time. First it was in the Bureau of Assessments, which was abolished, and that function was then taken over by the Bureau of Engineering, then moved to the Bureau of Street Lighting, and now it's been partially moved back to the Bureau of Engineering. So as these transfers took place, there was significant institutional knowledge of the fund and the procedures that had been lost. And then also experienced staff had retired, let alone uh, in our own Office of Accounting, we've experienced vacancies uh, due to the budget shortfalls of people that are actually general funded for these activities. Uh, however, in light of this audit report and understanding the importance of monitoring these special revenue funds, we have undertaken in accordance with one of their recommendations as well to monitor and review all of our special funds to identify uh, potential other amounts in funds that need to be transferred and we have, we completed that that review in early December of this year. Um, now, the controller's audit also identified 522,000 in six drainage district funds. And now drainage district funds were funds that were created in the mid-1960s to collect from developers amounts to construct and later maintain facilities in drainage districts. Uh, these, these amounts were spent to some extent, but in other cases, uh, the amounts have remained in the funds and, and some of the funds have not shown activity for many years, but some have shown activity more recently. So in light of this audit, we asked our Public Works Bureau of Sanitation and Bureau of Engineering to review the needs for the continued need for these funds in the drainage district funds. And the outcome was that uh, these drainage districts funds still require this money for construction of drainage district facilities and maintenance of those facilities. And they have developed a plan, the Bureau of Sanitation has a developed a plan uh, for each of these drainage district funds which would utilize them within the next three years. So essentially capital construction made from these funds would be spent directly from the drainage district funds and maintenance funds would be reimbursed to the stormwater pollution abatement fund. And the reason that would happen that way is the stormwater pollution abatement fund is a source of funding for the Bureau of Sanitation so it could spend these amounts in the first instance and then be reimbursed from these drainage district funds. Now, what we want to do with these drainage district funds is contra to what the controller's office recommended in their audit report where they recommended that these, these <coughs> funds be returned to the people that pay them or if they couldn't be located that they should, the money should be escheated to the general fund. But Public Works position is that 
since these monies were collected from the developers for constructing capital facilities and providing maintenance of those capital facilities, and the need is still there, there should not be any reason why these funds should be transferred to the general fund. <coughs> and that was substantiated by advice we received from the assistant city attorney assigned to public works. And, and we mentioned that in our response of the audit report. Um, there were a, a couple of other uh, findings which uh, I believe Mike mentioned a minute ago um, that had to do primarily with uh, reporting on the financial status report of a couple of our funds which were required under the ordinances which established those funds. That was the the, we call it the Clarks Fund, Fund 47R, <coughs> which is the Central uh, Los Angeles Recycling and Transfer Station Fund and the Integrated Solid Waste Management Trust Fund. We hadn't reported on those, and I'm glad to say now that the Bureau of Sanitation completed those reports in September. Um, now, another finding that was mentioned was that the department significantly underestimated <coughs> revenues each year for the street damage restoration fee fund. And these are funds that <coughs> fund the operations of the Bureau of Street Services. And to the extent that the revenues are underestimated, the difference would have to be picked up by the uh, general fund. Now, the estimates are made up jointly, are made jointly between the Bureau of Street Services and the CAO's office. So we agree that we're going to take a closer look and to refine this estimating process to get the estimates higher but not exceeding a reasonable amount that we're going to be achieving that amount of money. And then as far as their finding number five, which indicated that uh, the department did not revert uh, 424000 to the general fund for the central LA recycling and transfer station, uh, as explained in our response, that was largely due to a lack of staffing for this facility, which was taken over quite recently from a, a private uh, enterprise. But that has been completed. The, the research and the disencumbrances have all been completed as of April 22, 2008. So essentially, <coughs> I think those are the, the significant points that got raised in the audit, and those are our responses. But uh, we'd be glad to answer any questions. We have a person here from the Bureau of Sanitation. I also have representative from the city attorney's office. Okay. The controller's office, are there any issues that you were, um, you are still in disagreement with in terms of the responses from the public works? Okay, uh, I think uh, public works uh, now have imp has implemented all the recommendations uh, except for one, I think, uh, transferring uh, $522,000 for six uh, drainage uh, district fund. And uh, uh, we have received uh, their response with uh, additional information uh, very recently. Uh, so the office is in the process of uh, evaluating the response now. So. And my final question is, would it make sense to look at other the other 21 funds to see if there are any other monies that can be returned to the general fund? This just looked at 29 out of 50. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, you know, audit is based on a risk assessment. Uh, we 57 funds, we ran uh, FMIS records, and uh, uh, more or less we did a task review of uh, uh, activities. So pretty much, I think, uh, you know, w meaning we did not spend uh, time doing field work on others, but uh, I think uh, we pretty much covered all 57 funds. Ms. Uh, <coughs> sorry, just a few questions. Sure. I'm still losing my voice. Um, if uh, I know you indicated that uh, you indicated these had been dormant for three years, most of them for three years. Yes, 16 uh, inactive funds, uh, you know, it's idle for three years. 
and uh, some others uh, two years and one year. So mostly we selected our sample of the funds which are inactive more than one year. I know the controller's office is looking at special funds and yeah. you know all across the city and how many different categories we have. Do you think there's a, as we look kind of broader, like at financial policies in the city of Los Angeles that we have in budget committee, for example, that says um, there either one has to be report by the department or that they can, you know, there's a policy that says they can only stay inactive for such and such period of time. Do we think there's some structural changes that might be recommended? Because I don't know, you know, no disrespect about works, but what if, if, if the controller's office hadn't audited, could they have sat there for, for more years? And that's not just in the last year budget, but the last three, three years. So is there a trigger mechanism more so than anything else that you'd recommend? Well, you know, I'm not in position to make a recommendation, but uh, I don't have any doubts that uh, if we, uh, you know, spend the time and uh, look at other departments, a special fund, uh, I'm sure there will be uh, uh, some inactive funds, uh, you know, funds sitting there could be transferred to, to the general fund, you know. So, you know, I, I think a controller's office uh, uh, kind of a, you know, with the limited resources, we are doing a risk assessment and uh, uh, t trying to cover as much as possible. I think we try <clears throat> maybe try to help help you by having instead of you having to go audit to find it out, that there be some some reporting requirement by the departments overall in the financial policies so that um, uh, that would help us you know potentially. So I don't know maybe I'll ask the CLA's office, the attorney's office, see if there's a way we can add into our financial policies that any of those funds. And again, some of them may sit dormant for a variety of reasons, but at least we have a. A reporting mechanism, so we know what those are. I know the FMIS system. Hopefully, and all that technology, you know, technological changes will assist us in that way. But I'll ask my staff maybe to work with you all and see if there's a, a structural change that we could make yes. on this well. And on the item related to the uh, drainage funds and and um, Clarks and so forth, um, is the city controller's office. Uh, I know the city attorney's office has said it has to be spent in this way. So that's the only reason it's unresolved. Is that correct, or if if uh, are you going to review the recommendations by the department as to how it would be spent um, under the city attorney's advice as to its limitations yeah, of going back yeah, to Yeah, I believe well, yeah, we'll look at that uh, okay. also. <coughs> Excuse me. That was there. Okay. Thank you. And finally, I, um, a while back I introduced a motion to explore the feasibility of implementing a graffiti tracker system uh, using um, some of these um, the special revenue funds from Public Works. Any thoughts on that? Well, we'd have to identify uh, which special funds would be available to use for that purpose since most of our special funds, nearly all of our special funds, are you know, limited to specific purposes uh, and that's contained in the ordinances which they established them. Uh, so as far as being able to name or designate or pinpoint a, a fund that this time I wouldn't be able to do that. Okay. Oh, that th requires further discussion, so we'll, okay. All right, if, unless there's anything else, we'll uh, know and file this, this item, if that's uh, in agreement with my colleague. Um, we'll know and file this report, and thank you very much. Thank you. Any other items left on the agenda? Public comment cards? No public speakers? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Quick, perfect timing. Yeah. Perfect timing.